All right, hey, again, welcome. We're so glad that you're here. You can grab your Bible. Uh, maybe you're at home watching this or sometime later, grab a Bible and you can turn to the book of Philippians is where we are. Hey, I'll start with this. We're never more like God than when we give. We're never more like Jesus than when we give. We've been talking a lot about this. It's really the pathway to joy. Giving our attention, it all starts with attention. We've said attention is the beginning of devotion. That, that, that love really starts with focus. Focus is the beginning of worship. Some of us, even today, you know, we got a lot going on. We're struggling even to sing or you know, we're distracted by so much. That happens, right, throughout the week, not just in a moment where we're together worshiping the Lord. Even today, even while I'm preaching, we'll be distracted a bit. And yet focus is the beginning of, of love. If you can't focus on someone's heart, it's, it starts with listening. It starts with, with really empathy towards the other person. When we come to Christ, we get a new heart, and it leads us to a new spirit of generosity towards other people. We encounter the other in a different way. That's what it is to follow the way of Jesus, ultimately, how it lives its way out, how the grace of God comes out of us. Today, we're going to talk about a new generosity. Uh, throughout this series, we've, we've known we, get a, we got a new heart, we got a new ambition, we got a new purpose, we got new people, we got a new family, we've got a new way of living, and it all starts with what Jesus said. He said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Now, I hear that, and, and there is, there's a bit in my spirit that's like, oh, uh, Jesus said it. True, right? Got to be true. I want to live that way. But do, you, do we really believe this? That it's better to give than to actually receive. If we go into all of life that way, it's the pathway to joy. And this book, this book of Philippians, all about joy, living a joyful life. It's Paul's happiest letter. He loves these people. But he says in, in chapter uh, 2, we looked at, he says, this is a new mind. This is a new attitude that is yours now. If you are a believer, if you're a follower of Jesus and you've received his grace, his death on the cross for you, you've received that, your, your identity's been changed now because he now covers you. We talked about this in him doctrine that he goes into throughout this book and throughout the epistles. In him now, I have a new heart. I can live differently. I like to say it this way. All the love I, I need I have found in him. And so I can love you without any need for love in return. Any need for anything back. That is an amazing way to live. In my best moments, maybe for you, I've, I've got glimpses of that. I'm able to do that, right? To love people for free. Uh, even people that you know, maybe have hurt you or people who don't understand you or have said things about you. I can still love you. I can still love you because that's the way that Christ has changed my heart. It's more blessed to give than receive. We're never more like Jesus than when we give. And so today I want to talk about what that looks like, to have this, this mind, this attitude that is ours in Christ. And we're going to see today that contentment, this is where it starts, is the catalyst for this kind of generous living. And then community is a context, okay, in relationship is, is how we, we enter into this kind of generosity. And Christ is the cause of all of it. So it's a Philippians 4. You can see there verses 10 through 20. We're going to step back into some passages or verses we were in last week a little bit. If you were here, some of you, again, this is your first time with us or you haven't been in a while. Uh, this is, you can catch up. I'll place this in context a little bit. You know that you're being spiritually formed into the image of Christ as a believer um, by the, how much you give. How much you give your life away to other people. And it's all aspects of life. To share what we have. This is the life. This is the blessed life. And this is what I want for you. Listen, today, listen to this message and apply it to your life. This is going to change your life. It'll change your outlook today. It'll change your, your, your work at work or, or at school. Change your relationship in your home. If you apply this, I want you to be blessed. Okay? Jesus said it's more blessed, blessed, to give than to receive. I want you to be blessed. This is not, you know, a hyper, you know, prosperity gospel, blessed. Um, I'm talking about, I'm talking about a life that is filled with joy and a life that Christ has called us to. And it is counterintuitive. It is upside down. And so we've got to get our hearts and our minds around this first. It's by understanding what the word of God says to us. So first, I want to talk about contentment. It's the catalyst. It's the catalyst of our generosity. All right. So, so this all starts with a soulful contentment. And this is why so many struggle. 
That's why we can't get to that place of I'm, I'm a giver of my time, my energies, and, and my, my knowledge, my focus. I don't do that well. Or maybe my stuff, I don't share like I want to because we're not content or never satisfied. So if you're a person who is like, I, I, oh man, and it starts with us. I've always got to get better. I got to do better. I'm never, I'm never content with who I am. I'm always, I don't like the way I look. I'm always trying to work harder to get better. I'm trying to get smarter. And maybe you're one who, would, maybe you have kids and you're like, they're never good enough. They're always, I mean, you have this prompt always. You're just not good enough. And they, they're, they're growing up in this. Some of you grew up in that. Kind of, kind of mindset. If you're a micromanager of, of, of kids or, or your work, people at work, people, you can't, you can't work harder, get better. Come on, let's do this, let's do this. It's all from within you, this soulful unrest of discontent. It just reveals that you've not fully embraced the grace of Christ and the outworking of grace in your life. You know that in chemistry, a catalyst is a, it's a chemical that enters into a substance and it changes the substance for, f- like permanently. And this is, this is a great analogy of how Christ comes into our hearts and yet we're not immediately just the most generous person in the, wor- in the world, but we have a new outlook. We, we now say, you know what? I don't live for myself. I'm following the way of Jesus. We see that again, Philippians 2. One commentator said he came from all the way, from the very top, all the way down, disrobing his, his majesty as he came to take on humanity. And then the God-man enters in and he gives himself away. This is the way of Jesus. This is the life he's called us to. And this is, I believe, why you're here today. You're like, I want to live like that. I want to I experience joy, yes. But I want to live like Jesus because of all he's done for me. And so what he says here in verse 10, he says, I rejoiced in the Lord greatly. And now at length, you have re- revived your concern for me. You were indeed concerned for me, but you had no Opportunity. Now we'll place this in context. We're in the middle of, of this letter uh, or toward the end. Look at verse 11. Not that I am speaking of being in need for I have learned in whatever situation I am in to be content. Now, maybe you've read that verse before. Paul is saying, hey, I'm so grateful. You know, behind every ministry like this, a mission missionary, he, he's got support. Behind every mission uh, or ministry, there are people behind the scenes supporting like so many of you in this room right now. And he's saying, thank you, thank you, thank you. And what I'm gonna do today, a a different kind of sermon, we're just gonna celebrate as a church family. There's a portion where we're just gonna celebrate what God's doing and how he's at work through us all because I am so grateful for you, our church family. And there's so much happening that you you can't always know. We give out of faith and we trust that our our giving, I'm talking about money, giving our money away is transformed into life change. And it is, it's happening. In these days, and and we're going to celebrate some of that. But here's what I discover. And again, this message is not all about money. But at the heart of it, for many of us, that's the last place. Someone said, that's the last thing to get baptized with many of us. You know, like like you got baptized and and, and you're like, all right, I'm I'm ready. Here I go. Woo! Yeah, all right, let's go. You know, and and then we've got every, and and some have noted in our context, it's like, Okay, I'm really doing well in these areas, but I'm still getting tripped up, not living the joyful life because I haven't learned how to give. And, and, and so in regard to money, let me just offer this. I've told you this before. I'm like a financial expert. I'm a financial wizard, and you don't even know this. But I just follow what the Lord says about giving. Stacy and I have always followed this from the time we were, we were married. But here's the deal. Here's, here's, you know, the world tells you, here's what you do with your money. You go out and make as much money as you can, and when you get that money, you spend it right? My money. Start with spending. Is this your money? We have this mindset. And then we go, well, you know, I might, I don't know, I could, I I guess I could, I could save maybe. I don't know. No, I got to pay, I got to pay, pay taxes. Got to do that. I got to pay debt. I'll call it repay debt because you're paying again and you're paying more. And then, you know what, you could, you could maybe save some, I guess. And then, then if you have some left over, you got a little left over, you can give then that, that's really how many of us have a mindset. The scripture flips that completely, flips it completely. Give first. When Stacy and I were first married, we still do this. We have a budget, right? This is a good word for some of you. And some of you single young, and young people, you, you form a budget so you know where your money's going, right? What you do first though is say, bam, I get this much money coming in, I give. I give this amount. I give this amount. And, 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 and for, for us, full disclosure, like we've been 10% or more in our marriage, seeking to grow in giving throughout our marriage. 
And God has been faithful. Not that it's, you know, this, I do this, so he does this. But here's what's happened. You give first, and what's happening is you're going, everything I have is his. That's the whole point of first fruits. I give away. And some of you need to come to a point of percentage giving. Some of you, like, 10% could be your, be your training wheels of giving. Some of you are like, I, there's no way. Here's, here's my point. Here's my point. Many of I talk to so many who say, man, I want to give. I get that. And even now you're going, man, I'd like to be generous. I want to give. I'd love to give more of what I have away. I'd love to be in that position. Why are you not? Because you were not content and you ended up purchasing this thing that now you're paying on or all of your budget, if you will, is taken. You got this much left to give because you're flipped. You're, and why is that? Because you were not content with what you had and you needed more. So at the heart of generosity, the catalyst is, is contentment. It's saying all that I have and need, I have in Christ. I don't need more stuff. I don't, I don't need more things. I am happy with what I have. I'm gonna give to the Lord and I'm gonna watch him do his work through it. And many of us need to follow this because here's the thing, we gotta teach our kids to do this too. You want unhappy, ungrateful kids? Then, then, then just give them, give them stuff. You know, Stacey and I, again, with our kids, we all, growing up, we always were like, they will never have all that we can give them. All that we could afford for them, they're not gonna have it. Because here's the thing, listen, parents, withholding from your children is one of the best ways to build character in your kids. And we, and we all know this, right, to not give them everything they have, but every time we teach our children that everything you need, you have found in him, you're happy, right? Then, and then it breathes forth this contentment ultimately. Then they're able to give. And Paul is saying, listen, this is what we, I've learned. I've learned to be content. He's saying, I'm grateful. I'm good. Uh, wasn't quite expected, but, I'm really, but I really appreciate it. But then he says, I know, look at verse 12. I know how to be brought low. This is interesting uh, language he's using here. And I know how to abound. I know how to have a little. I know how to have a lot. In any and every circumstance, I have learned. Okay, look at this. He's rejoiced. Notice the pattern. I've learned and the secret of, of facing plenty and, and hunger and abundance and need. He says, now I know how to do this. I have learned. And the Greek language here, often, you know, the Greek gives us a nuance to help us further understand. And, this, and it helps us here. Where he says, I've learned to be content. And he talks about this secret. It's not like he had this higher knowledge moment. I got, I got a secret knowledge that I now have. He's saying the word, the Greek word here is, is, is to initiate. The word that's used here. Some commentators believe that he's using some pa uh, pagan vocabulary to really connect. They would have gone, oh, I get it. I mean, it's like some of you have been maybe in a fraternity or sorority or some club, maybe some secret club. It, it's where you, you're initiated into some knowledge that the group has that nobody outside has. One commentator said it this way. He, he's saying that, that, it's, that what he's learned, he's now content in every circumstance because what he's gone through is a difficult process that can only be explained as initiation. In fact, here, the commentator wrote, said this way. I've, I've been very thoroughly initiated into the human lot with all of its ups and downs and through the course of my experience and my existence, I've come to understand through great trial and great struggle what it is to be content in all circumstances. Now, I go to Link to explain that because it hit me. Here in North Dallas, in America, not many of us have been initiated. Very few of us have been. So I'm thinking, well, no wonder we're not content. If contentment comes that way, we've not been there. Now, maybe there's been moments, but relative, right? Right? I can remember, I remember going from paycheck to paycheck. I remember being, being in college and having to, I was like, I was going to, you know, for real, I was going to Wendy's and I'd order like some soup or something and I would, I would just eat crackers because they were free. I'd just keep eating crackers, you know? And some of y'all been there, but not, not really. Even that, like that's not even suffering. That's not initiation. So how do we enter into this kind of initiation? I think those of us who've been given much, one of the ways is to give, is to give. Now, I've been praying recently, and this will sound a little weird, um, but I've been meditating on Philippians 2, and I do strange things, but the Lord prompted me. I've been praying, the, wor the word is humility, right? And especially Philippians 2, who humbled himself, and how does, how does humility come? Here's what, here's what Paul's kind of saying here, through humiliation, 
how, do you, how are you humble? Through, by being humiliated. So what does that look like? So I started to pray a couple weeks ago. I started praying, Lord, um, humiliate me today. Like at least one time, just big time, humiliate me. And I'm like, okay, Lord, th- thank you. Like he's answering my prayer, right? And I, Stacy, I was talking to Stacy about this. Stacy goes, I don't think you like, need to pray that. Like, I don't really, I don't, that's not something like, you know, we're like, what are you, why? And I, I don't know. I'm just like, Lord, humiliate me. Because the word humilis, uh, it's where we get our word hummus. Um, and it means ground. It means the earth. I guess you're eating dirt or something. But it means low. It's, it's dirt. It's like being low, brought low, brought down. And, I, and I'm just like, Lord, through, and here's what it's done. Not so much, Lord, please humiliate me. But, but what it has, it's made an, this awareness when I am humiliated, and it happens a few times throughout the day, I'm humiliated and I'm going, Lord, okay, let me embrace this. Let me, I want to just be more like Jesus. And so let's, let's humble ourselves so that we can too say like Paul, wherever I am, whatever situation I'm in, I am content because all I need I have found in him. If it's more blessed to give than receive, then watch this. The curse is the, is the flip of that. It's curse to receive without giving. It's a curse to receive without giving. We implode, it seems, our hearts implode. And then next he goes, then he quotes, this is the most quoted straight out of context, verse 13. We can all say it together. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And through our American individualism, you know, um, and, and I guess prideful spirit, we look at this through the lens of that and our materialism and we go, yeah, I can do everything. I can get that job. I can make an A on this test. I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. I can do that. And often it's applied to athletics, right? Like I can run faster. I can climb the mountain. And that, that we, and, and, and we, or we see Jesus bench pressing something, you know, on a, on a shirt or something. I can do all things through Christ. Who thre- that's not what he's saying. I, no, that's not at all what he's saying. He's saying when I'm weak, when I'm brought low, when I'm beat down, when I'm humiliated, I'm still the same. My love for God doesn't change. My identity doesn't change. Through my circumstances, what I have, what I don't have, I am complete. I can do all things in every circumstance because of Christ and how he loves me. Again, I can love you because of his love for me without anything in return. I got enough. That's a great way to live, such a freeing way to live. Contentment, see, is the catalyst for this kind of living. And then community is the context of our generosity. And this is where I want to just celebrate together. And if you're a guest, just listen in of uh, the kind of church you stepped into. It, this, what, what, what we're saying here is it's in relationship. That's what Paul's saying. Because y'all care for me, y'all love me, y'all know me, I know you. There's a giving and receiving. And this is what the church is all about. This is what godly relationships are about. It connects us with the needs of others. And it also connects me. I've experienced this so much. I am able to receive Love in relationship with you and with those who are in Christ. And so he says in verse 14, yet it was kind of you to share my trouble. Paul got in, he was getting in some trouble. And not just like he didn't have enough to eat. I mean like trouble for sharing the gospel. He's in prison. This is what John Perkins would call, he's in some good trouble. This is the good trouble that Jesus got into. We need to get into and share in some good trouble with one another and others. We have missionaries who are in troubling situations and places. We have ministry partners all over the city. And all this happens in relationship. Just want you to see, I'm gonna just offer some pictures along the way here. But we say the the gospel travels at the speed of relationships. And so here recently, we've been together. You know, we've been able to celebrate together like we did yesterday in community. And so much of this happens in the context of relationship in the life of our church. And I praise God that we're able in our connect groups and and, uh, being together. Community is the context for it all. And that's how we we live and we, we, we have our relationship with each other in love. He goes on to say in verse 15, And you Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, so when you first received it, when I left Macedonia, no church, listen to this, entered into partnership with me in giving and receiving except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once again. 
And together, this is all of us. Some of you know that, that we recently collected, just want to pause and, and get back around to some things that you've been a part of. 3,000 cards and, um, and notes that we wrote to people, healthcare workers and police officers. And we were able to go and, and, and present these. I want to share this. Listen to this. We got, we're getting letters back. We've been getting notes. Bill Mathis, he's the um, police chief here at, in University Park. And he wrote this. Listen to this. Please do not underestimate the impact that this has had on our officers. It has been a hard 18 months. Can you imagine? And this is so encouraging to us. Thank you. Tell your church thank you for how you've blessed us. Another one was from, and from Medical City up, um, in the ER room. I'm a paramedic here. And today my, my director handed me a message card from Park City Baptist Church and a, and a note and a Chick-fil-A card for $10. Now, listen to this. I've, I've felt so beaten down here recently because we are a very busy ER with, with minor you know, staffing shortage. And we've all been working so hard in, in the most difficult times. And many of our patient population that we work with are not always grateful even cognizant of how very hard we work for them and care for them and make their experience the best that it can be. And to know that y'all are out there, to know that you're praying, that you're thinking about us, lifting me up today. I felt a new life. Listen to this, a little act of generosity and a new vigor come to me today and turned it right around in my work and my patient interactions. Thank you for supporting us and for giving me strength with your message and with your card for me to keep going with love and gratitude, Jacob. He's a licensed paramedic. One medical worker um, told me that we talked to, said, Jeff, no one has done this. Nobody's done this for us. Y'all are the only one. I mean, and I thought of Paul's words. Y'all are the ones, You're the, except for you only. And, and that's often the case. You need to know that our church, friends, listen, and I'm just going to, as a pastor who loves you so much, I just want to praise God. This is not, not a prideful thing, but collectively together. Our church has been first, and, and in many ministries, the only ones who stepped in to say, we're going to help seed this thing. We're going to help with this project. Never before done. I think of Buckner projects like down in South Texas or at Bachman Lake here, Hope Centers, that we've been a part of. I think of our work at Cornerstone in South Dallas. I think of all that's happening. I think of the men of Nehemiah. I'm going to be with them, I think, next week again, and they're such a blessing, and we have helped support that ministry along with so many others. In fact, our missions uh, committee received a report lately, and uh, this is just, a, you know, you can see kind of a co community partnership. I know you can't read this, but it's Dallas, South Texas, Guatemala, uh, the Caribbean, all of these ministries here in, in Dallas, and what you need to know is that the bottom line is two plus million dollars going out to missions, ministry outside of us to advance the gospel here in our city and around the world. Some of you know, I want to, I want to circle back to rejoice with you, the seed company, uh, translation uh, ministry, it's, in, it's out of Arlington, but translating scripture. You might remember in 2019, that was like a, wasn't that a decade ago. So pre-pandemic, we gave $310,000. We collected during Easter season to say, let's get the scriptures to people who don't have it in their heart language. And so there's this group called the Low and the Rook people, people groups, uh, languages in, in Southeast Asia. And now here we are, we got a report uh, just recently. We keep getting reports, but I, I wanted to share this with you because we hadn't circled back around. Uh, and Corey Thurman was sharing this with me, with our team. And, we, and I looked at this thing, details that they've given us that now these people, they did not have the scriptures in their heart language at all. And now they have the book of Luke, the gospel of Luke has been translated along with Acts and the epistles. And now they have scripture for the first time. And we're hearing from people, Christians now, who come to Christ, who are reading scripture for the first time in their language. And God has done this. And, and, and so the seed company is saying, because of you, you went first. You've gone first, and others have joined us to help make this happen. Millions of people have access to the scripture where they did not otherwise. And, and I just hear Paul's words, except for you only. You went first. It's why we're having these conversations worth having. 
as we did with Brian Loritz just this a uh, couple weeks ago uh, here on, on the race and gospel. We had Beth Allison Barr. We're looking at issues in culture to say, let's, let's lead the way. Let's learn together. Wouldn't we be the kind of church that would say, hey, let's go. And I heard from, I, just this week, I heard from a black pastor who said to me, and, and, and he's saying it to us. He said, Jeff, thank you, you and your church. Thank you for always being first. Thanks for always being first to move in to these kinds of conversations, to come across right the, 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 the aisle, as it were, to come towards those who need to know the love of Jesus, to bring about this kind of, in this case, racial equity and reconciliation to teach us what is the role of, of women? How has God gifted all of us to serve him? And we've got another one coming up. I know I sound like I'm, I am, I'm promoing all this. But birds and bees, gang, listen, on November the 12th, it's a Friday night. Every parent, every parent should be here that night. Because we are talking about biblical sexuality, Okay. Megan Michelson is going to be here. You can see that with, with birds and bees. It's going to be amazing. We're doing all this. I'm saying we can do this because you're giving, because we all help make it happen. You've been so generous with South Texas just recently. We're collecting items, you know, blankets and such. With the blanket drive, you've been amazing. And, and through our uh, work with Jack Lowe and all that's happened throughout the pandemic, you know, collecting food, gosh, through the big freeze, um, through parades when they couldn't be out there together, through our relationships, it's been amazing. And then when I think of um, our in Espanol ministries and how Rolando Aguirre preached one message and then bam, shut down. And he and his team, he's raising up disciples. They have these oikos groups where they're making disciples training in the institute. They went, this group, listen, last Thursday night, 18 of our members went down to um, Trinity Groves and 12 people came to Christ as they were witnessing right there on the bridge, you know, on what I call the high line, uh, our own high line. But they were out there just sharing Christ, say, let's go. And it has been amazing. Many of you know that we're in our third year of the CPC. Um, you can see the, this is our first class. We've had two since then. And now we're now at 20 plus pastors who are now planting churches here in our city, really in the DFW area. And it has been incredible. Some of y'all have met our residency. We started a residency program just this year, and they have been incredible, serving among us, being trained every week to serve the Lord. And it all starts here, gang. It all starts here with us discipling up the youngest among us. And so you know that with our kids space, I think of all that's being done there, um, all that's happened through VBS and our kids' ministry. A focus moving forward is our next-gen ministry, of course, here. And all of us are part of that either through your teaching or through your giving. But we, we, you might know we had a $3.7 million project to, to renovate our kids' space. And, and now we have raised 3.4. My challenge has been that we would be debt-free by the end of this year, $300,000. And if you've not been a part of that, above and beyond your regular giving, all of us together, we can do this. And to be debt-free, imagine that, a church like ours, completely debt-free across the board. I mean, that would be such a gift to to us all and to the world. And as we just give more and more, I just wanna to highlight too that when we think about next gen, Grant Glover, who serves with our young adults, um, sitting right over here with, with a core group of our people, he and a bunch of leaders have decided, man, we're gonna reach our friends for Jesus. And so they meet every Tuesday night at a thing called Off the Clock. And at OTC, they, um, they come together with friends, just invite friends to come to a place where they feel safe and they share the gospel. I mean, he just preaches grace every week to people who would never show up here. Probably 150 or so guests they've seen so far who would never come to our campus. We've got to do new things to reach the next generation, and we're doing it. And I'm saying all this because if you are a giver, and yes, I'm prompting you to say, come on, give more. Again, if you're not a giver, start giving. Because this is what's happening, and only God can take our money and then turn it into transformed lives, right? And we do all of this together. Now, now there's, there's a lot that's being said about, about the church, um, what some have called the big sort. Uh, I don't know if you know this in my world that we see it. You've probably seen this. People are, are we're, you know, are we in church, out of church? Are we back at church? We're not back. Where, are they, where do they go? Are they here? Did they leave? Are they, wait, new people. Wow. And all of this, a big sort, sorting out. And, and I just want to say this to, to guests, if you're here, a lot of you are new. If you want to join our church, I, I would say this. Don't leave your church 
Um, if you've invested there, if you have relationships there, don't, don't leave your church. If they're, if they're preaching the word of God, pointing to Jesus, don't leave. Stay in. Stay in. Because here's the deal, and this is true for all of us. You're going to be as happy in, in a church as you want to be. You're going to be as happy in a church as you want to be. And the point is, when you give, when you're involved, when you come, not with the posture, give me, give me, give me, give me what is in for me. Instead, I'm here to serve in the body of Christ. That's where the joy comes from. That's where you know, man, I am finding my place here. I don't need to leave because I'm serving Jesus. You got to check your heart, friends. You got to check your heart. And so I'll land with this. Paul says in verse 18, I have received full payment and more. I am well supplied, having received from Epaphroditus, he's the one who brought the gifts to him, a a fragrant offering, a sacrifice, acceptable and pleasing to God. Now he's using worship language because that's what it is. When we give, we're worshiping. Contentment is the catalyst for generosity. Community, right, is the context. And then finally, Christ is the cause. I mean, it's all we talk about here. He's the cause of it all. We give out an overflowing generosity. There's a cause and effect. Christ is the cause. The effect is this kind of life. And then he says in verse 19, and my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in Christ Jesus. If we had time to think about that. According to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus, he's gonna supply for you. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. You know, the gospel is not, you know, I'm going to get from God. I just need more from God. And Lord, give me this. Instead, he gives us, yes, his grace to transform our hearts so that we can give away our lives to others. And today it'll start. It'll start with attention. It'll start with your time. It'll start with saying, you matter to me right now. It'll start with listening well with people around you. We give ourselves away. And we do this because of all that he's done for us. We're never more like God than when we give. John 3, 16. Let's all say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one and son, yeah, only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. God so loved you that he gave everything for you to have relationship to him, with him. And so let's do this. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. And I want you to ponder before we head into this week, may the, the love of God bring a contentment into your heart. It'd be the catalyst to live this kind of life where you're giving to others all week long. Just to have a posture in conversation as you enter into a room, as you go to work, as you encounter people. I'm here to give now to this person. And if you're here today, friend, and you, with your head bowed and eyes closed, just to focus your heart, the Lord loves you. He gave his son for you. Jesus has come to die on the cross for you. He lived the perfect life for you because you couldn't. He gave himself all the way to the cross, taking on your sin, your shame, so that you would receive his grace and be forgiven and live forgiven. It all starts as you receive him and his love for you by faith, even now. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Thank you for dying on the cross for me. I received your grace, your gift of salvation. I give you my life. Now make me the person you've created me to be. Lord, we love you. We praise you. May we be a generous people this week as we live for you. All to the praise of your glorious grace. In Jesus' name, everyone said amen and amen.